Hello everyone, this is your favorite online entomologist Bart Coppens. And today I am in an ecological reserve in southeastern Brazil that anyone can visit, so can you. It is called Regua, Reserva Ecológica de Guapiatsu. And I make promotional videos here, but I also study butterflies and moths. And today I'm going to walk in the wetlands to the mountains in the forest and see if we can get any special butterflies here on camera. I am very curious, let's get started. Let's see what's in the forest, guys. Sitting here on a leaf, we found our first hair streak butterfly. It's one of the more common ones that you can find here in Regua. I believe it's a Terita species, maybe Terita's hemon. There you go. All right, this is the hair streak Terita's hemon. A very common species here in the natural reserve of Regua. Anyone that visits us will see them on the trails at one point. Yeah, they are a very beautiful species. Here on the leaf is another hair streak butterfly. It seems that today is an excellent day for hair streaks because it's very warm. So one fun fact about the hair streak butterflies of Brazil is they spend most of the time in the treetops, but on very, very, very hot days, they come down to the understory layer to cool down in the shade because the treetops right now are too hot. Also really cool is hair streaks tend to have these tails on their hind wings and they rub the wings together and it looks like two wiggling antennae and it distracts birds. Let's show you this cool little hair streak. Hair streaks can be very hard to identify in the rainforest because there are dozens of similar species and very little online resources available. This one could be a species of Camisecla. Maybe Camisecla Vesper, but I can't be sure of this ID yet. It's very difficult. Ah, oh, look! Baby capybara! Isn't that awesome? How cute! Capybaras are very common in Regua, but it can be hard to see them because they are shy animals. They are also prey for other large animals such as caiman and snakes. Oh, I am not just an influencer, I'm also an entomologist and I study the life cycles of moths and butterflies here in southeastern Brazil. 
And this looks like typical caterpillar feeding damage. It is an inga plant from the Fabaceae family, and inga plants are commonly eaten by caterpillars. If we turn this around, ooh, look at that. We've revealed ourselves the larva of a tiger moth species that's eating this leaf. And just look at how fantastic the caterpillar is. It's super colorful. Ooh, those breeding this in captivity would be fantastic, right? Look at that, beautiful. Wow, those hairs make it really beautiful. I think some caterpillars are prettier than the moths or butterflies they turn into. I'm, this one is not dangerous, but a disclaimer, guys, please don't touch random caterpillars in the rainforest. It can be dangerous. In this case, however, I'm... Oh, oops, almost knocked down the camera. I'm going to collect it. Thankfully, in my bag, I have some sample jars, so I'm going to see what butterfly or moth this turns into. It's going to be a moth, a tiger moth. Spoiler alert. Funny thing is the caterpillars of some species in this area are still unknown to science. So by raising the caterpillars, you can actually discover new things to science here in the rainforest. Tip to find insects is look for feeding damage. As you can see, these leaves here of this climbing plant here are completely eaten. There's holes in the leaves. So if you check the leaves, it's easy to find a perpetrator. Whoop. Oops, I dropped it. Oh, here it is. Oh. And I just dropped it again. <laughs> well, that was a very nice beetle, but I guess we won't get to see it because I was silly. Oops, better luck next time. Hey, looks similar to the hair streak we saw before, doesn't it? But the markings and size are slightly different. Didn't I tell you? There's dozens of similar ones. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say it looks like Calicopis bellera, but I may be entirely wrong here. Hair streaks, hair streaks, hair streaks. I don't know guys, almost all the butterflies we found today are hair streaks. It's a really good day for the Likaeni day. I'm not complaining because they can be some of the most beautiful butterflies out there. What's cool is most of them are iridescent blue or iridescent green. But you won't see it unless they fly because they rarely open the wings. And the underside tends to be more camouflaged. Although there is a number of species that also have iri iridescent underside. Maybe we'll see one of those today. I'm, I'm feeling lucky with the hair streaks. Hmm, maybe I should catch one or two species so I can show you guys the inside of the wings. That's very beautiful. But we have to be careful when touching handling butterflies. They're very fragile. Thankfully, I'm a professional. I know exactly how to handle them without hurting them. But still, I prefer not to catch unless I have to for an educational video. So don't worry, I'm at a natural reserve. I have all the permissions to handle and catch them. I don't kill or harm any insects. I love and respect nature. My whole channel is about respecting nature. So don't worry about uh, that. It's a beautiful day in the forest. It's 36 degrees Celsius, so I'm suffering a little bit. It's really hot. But thankfully this is a, a thick forest, so there's a lot of shade. In the sunny areas, it's scorching hot. So that's why the hair streaks are here sitting in the shade to cool down, just like me. Wow, what is this? This is a butterfly I wanted to see all my life. It is finally here, Iraitis periander, the blue doctor butterfly. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bart Coppens holding one of the most special butterflies that you can find in southeastern Brazil. Well, and many other places too. This is a species of Rhetus butterfly. It's one of the many metal marks or Rio Dinide that are found in this region. And although this specimen is not entirely perfect, it's missing some pieces. 
which is typical for butterflies. It's hard to find perfect ones, considering they are under attack constantly. But it's still, seriously, one of the most beautiful butterflies that I have seen in my entire life on Mother Earth. Let's zoom in for the deep, deep blue color. Guys, this is incredible. This is amazing. I'm speechless. I could cry. I never would have imagined that I would have seen this butterfly up close with my own eyes in real life. And it's drinking salt of my skin. That is absolutely incredible. I have no words for how flabbergasted, stunned and honored I am to see this beautiful creature. Now Rates seem to spend a lot of time in the treetops. But like typical metal marks, they do come to the floor uh, once in a while, especially if it's hot. Sometimes they cool down in the understory layer of the forest to escape the heat and the canopy. Oh, there it goes. Well, this was a short video, but I am on the verge of tears. That was one of the most beautiful moments in my life. Wow. On this plant we see another hair streak and it's another Territas hemon. It's the same one that we've seen two times in the video already. This time I'm gonna catch it. Never mind, it flew away. <laughs> Let's try again. All right. Now here we see a nice butterfly that we've seen on this channel dozens of times, to be honest, because it is very common. Let me turn the camera a bit, sorry. This should be Diatria climena. The 88 butterfly. It's called that way because on its wings it appears to have like an 88 shaped marking. Although in this case one of the eights is a bit deformed. They vary a bit. It's hard to film it because the leaf it's sitting on keeps shaking which is quite annoying. Come on damn camera, focus. Oh gosh. This is a very common butterfly here in the forest though. And sometimes they'll sit on your hand if you are careful because they like the salt and minerals. So let's see if I can convince it to sit near my fingertip. Oh, it's gone. Some of the leaves on this plant have been skeletonized. Which means an insect has been eating the leaf, eating the leaf tissue, but leaving the veins intact. And here we see the perpetrator. Shout out to the beetle fans of my channel. I see you. This one, this one is for you. This, prob this very beautiful little beetle is probably the perpetrator. Wow. We have many species of super colorful beetles here in Brazil and sometimes I find them in the rainforest like I do now. Although beetles are harder to find than butterflies and moths. Because they don't really fly in plain view, they are sitting more hidden. Sometimes in the vegetation, but look at that. Are its colors not absolutely awesome? What a beautiful little thing. Truly nice. Let's put some sunlight on it. Hello beetle. Now beetles are a very important part of the environment as well. Oh, come on camera. Gee, can you stop focusing on the background? This is so annoying. There you go. That's great. So the larva of beetles, they break down compost, they break down decaying wood. Like if a tree falls in the forest, it's often the beetle larva that will consume the wood. They are reducers in the environment, they break down also sometimes dead animals, like carrion beetles. There you go. And they're just really pretty. That's enough beetle. Enjoy your day, sir. Let's continue down this road.
Well, it looks like a tree has fallen down last night. This is why you have to be careful here. After bad storms, trees can just fall. There's a cool spider on the tree bark. Hello, little jumping spider. You're on YouTube. Oop. All right, let's go under it. Imagine this thing falling on top of you though. Stand still, we see a very interesting little butterfly here. Oh, look at that. So this is, I believe this one is called, I think it's a snowflake. And it's not hard to see why it's called a snowflake, because the way it flies exactly reminds us of a snowflake. This is very cool. Let's see if we'll sit anywhere. So these are very often very close to the forest floor. And you're very shy. Let's see. Oh, it landed. Have to use a long distance close up because these butterflies are super shy. Oh, you see it? It's heart shaped. It's like a white, cute little heart. I don't know if we can get any closer. Well, hey guys, would you look at that? Sitting here on a leaf is a tailed skipper and it's sitting perfectly with its wings open. Wow. They rarely do that. So this is a great shot. It's not a very colorful butterfly, unfortunately. Actually, the majority of butterflies here are plain brown. Many of the metal marks are brown. Many of the hair streaks are brown. Many of the skippers are brown. But that's fine, they're still butterflies and they deserve to be filmed. Look at its furry little body. Now birds tend to snatch butterflies from behind. And when they do, the birds will tend to grab the tails. Now the cool thing about these tails is they can break off. So kind of like a lizard dropping its tail, the butterfly will tear off the tails, but the butterfly will escape. So it will just have a mouthful of tails. Let's see if I can put it on my finger now. It flew away. I like butterflies with tail on the wings. It looks very cool in my opinion. Here's another Teritas hair streak, and I really want to show you its color. So let's see if I can catch it. For that caterpillar I caught earlier. Looks like there's another one sitting on a different plant. But that's fine, I'm happy with that, because with two caterpillars, if it's a male and a female, maybe, they are moths that I can breed, so I'm gonna raise it too. Yikes! Sitting down here is a very large species of huntsman spider. I don't. I, it looks like it belongs to the group of spiders that include the wandering spiders. The what are they called? Something like the stainy day. Anyway, the, it is not a Brazilian wandering spider for Notia. It's not the really dangerous one. It's probably one, one of the less common more harmless ones, but it's still cool to see. It's pretty large, by all means. Definitely wouldn't want to get bitten by that. Now, I don't know if you guys consider spiders to be beautiful or pretty. To most people they are nasty creatures who look scary. I think spiders can be beautiful. They're, so, they're very sophisticated creatures, you know, they are very complex. And they are very potent hunters. As you can see here, the cephalothorax and its abdomen have beautiful creamy markings and the spider is just lurking there. It can sit there for hours waiting for a bug to cross its path and then it will destroy it. And now I am very tempted to poke it with a stick or feed it an insect. Let's see if we can do that. I'm gonna poke it guys. Let's see how the spider will re react to this little stick right here. Ooh. 
it ran away instead of attacking. Can you see how fast it was? It caught me off guard. Wow, that's a fast spider. This is interesting, here we see a Heliconius. These are actually kind of rare in this area. Heliconius are very common in a lot of parts of South America, but here in southeastern Brazil I rarely see them. So, it's one of the passion vine butterflies. Maybe I should catch it. I don't know what it's doing. Is it looking to lay eggs on a host plant? Hmm, these are very beautiful butterflies though. Is that vine passiflora? It doesn't look like it now, does it? If it is, then I can be mistaken. Hmm. Sorry guys, I think I'm gonna catch it unless it lands. Uh, oh, actually it's sitting there. And it's flying. I'm not sure if I want to catch it. I'm not sure if I'm going to get the opportunity. Yeah, I want to catch it. Oop! These are very easy to catch because they fly very slowly. Butterfly is definitely an older specimen. It's lost a lot of its color. But as you can see, this species has a nice blue, dark blue shade. If you watch it under the right angle, it's hard to see. Can you see the blue shade? Now these butterflies are poisonous, so not many animals can eat or hunt them. Passion vine has toxins in it and the caterpillars absorb these toxins and so do the butterflies. They keep it from the larval stage. So this makes them unpalatable to most animals and this is why they can afford to fly so slowly and carelessly. They are not really concerned about being eaten. They can live a long time too. So as you can see this female, yeah, she there's some nice red markings. Not sure if it's a female. It's a beautiful species, but it's a really old specimen. And what's really cool is Heliconius butterflies are one of the few butterflies that can eat something other than nectar. They can use the proboscis to digest pollen. As you can see here, there's pollen on its proboscis, the yellow stuff. And they can use an, a digestive enzyme to liquidize it and drink it. This gives them a longer lifespan than other butterflies. Because other butterflies, they're essentially just living off nectar or tree sap or fruit juice. But it's just sugars, right? So it's like living off energy drinks. You won't live very long if you only drink Coca-Cola. It's like that. But these butterflies have a rich diet because they can digest pollen. So they get amino acids and proteins and all the building blocks to make new cells that are very hard to get for other butterfly species. I just released it. Bye butterfly, thanks for being on my channel. I have a very interesting phenomenon under this rock. So here in Brazil, we have some species of mosquitoes that are attracted to spider webs. And you may be wondering, wow, are these mosquitoes suicidal? Do they want to get eaten by the spider? And the funny thing is, no, they never get eaten by the spider. And the spider webs don't even seem to affect them. Why, why and how this is happening is a complete mystery to me, but I've seen this many times. They like to dance in spider webs. It's pretty crazy. Because most people would imagine that mosquitoes and spiders are mortal enemies. One of my theories that spider webs maybe give them a sort of protection or a kind of safety because the webs don't seem to affect them. But the spider webs could affect all their bugs. So well, if they are sheltering and sleeping in here on a spider web, then just maybe other insects will leave them alone because the spider will eat the other bugs. Who knows? I have no idea. It is very strange. Let's see if I can put the camera closer. If you wait, the mosquitoes will actually land in the web. But it's hard to film right now because it's happening under the rock where it's very dark so I can't really get good video of a dark place but maybe I'll find more videos of this in the future. It's a very strange phenomenon. You do see something cool. It's the first swallowtail butterfly of the day. Can you see it on leaf? Ha! Gotcha! 
Okay, let's take her to the shed and make a close-up and then release it. This is a toxic butterfly. I believe this species could be Paridis anchises nephalium. These butterflies use pipevine as food plant and the caterpillars store the aristolochic acids inside of their bodies. This makes the caterpillars, pupa and the butterflies toxic. Their red and black colors are a warning. Don't eat me, I'm poisonous. If you eat me, you will be very sick. Awesome species of swallowtail butterfly. This is why I need to travel, to show you these species in the wild. I'll show you some close-ups before releasing it. All the butterflies I catch are released and unharmed. I know how to handle them without hurting them. 99.9% <clears throat> of all insects are my friends. But there's one kind of insects that aren't, and that's the mosquitoes here. I love being in the forest here, but the mosquitoes, they always manage to ruin the experience a little bit. So I'm putting on some anti-mosquito spray. It doesn't last very long because I sweat and when I sweat it washes off. It's a constant and constant assault. And maybe the people who live in Brazil are used to it, but I'm not. As a foreigner, the mosquitoes irritate me enormously. And they do subtract a bit from the experience. <gasps> Don't breathe it in. <sighs> oh, I hate mosquitoes. Obviously, mosquitoes are a super important part of the environment. And if all mosquitoes went extinct, we would have had a problem. But nobody enjoys being bitten. And I'm not even in the Amazon rainforest. I've heard in the Amazon it's even worse. What's this? Oh. There's a caterpillar on my shoulder. Let's release it. Alright, let's continue our uh, jungle tour. Pow! Here on this branch is the largest, weirdest mosquito that I've ever seen. I'm not even sure if it's a mosquito. Look at that. It is. I think it's more like a crane fly. Wow, did you see that? My face is going numb after spraying mosquito spray on it. That's weird. I lost sensation in my lips. <laughs> At least I won't get stung. It's looking. Yeah. It's a beetle, isn't it? Yeah. Alright guys, I just found what looks like a huge butterfly caterpillar. Am I lucky or not? I think so. This is not a toxic one, don't worry. Oh, 
Wonder what butterfly is going to turn into. That's really cool. Man, these butterflies are really hard to identify, I swear. I think this is Kelmia calmus, one of the smaller hair streaks in Ragua. Nothing is known about its biology or ecology at all. This is why I travel to make videos and to research butterflies and moths. Oh my god! What I just found here is incredible. Do you guys recognize this insect? I'll give you 10 seconds to figure it out. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Ah, did you see that? What it did? 4. Believe it or not, but what you just saw was an ant mimicking spider. It dropped to the ground. Let me pick it up. It's on my hand. This is a spider. And, oh, oh my god, I'm so... This is a nerdgasm. Oh, this is a spider! This is an ant mimicking spider. Look at how perfect the mimicry is. It's very hard to tell that it's a spider at all. But as you could see, it was making web a few seconds ago and it jumped down. This is perfect mimicry. It looks like a nasty species of stinging ant. Most people would leave it alone for that reason. Let's see. But sometimes you can see it jump down. Wow, it's fantastic. This is maybe one of the most perfect cases of ant mimicry that I've ever seen. Look at how amazing. Oh my god. It's so hard to film it because it just keeps walking and walking around. Look at it. Craziest spider species that I've ever seen, to be honest. Oh, it's sitting still. Now we can look at the morphology. And you can see by its eyes and its body that it's a spider. Wow, it even kind of walks like an ant, doesn't it? Like the way it moves its legs. Everything about it is just completely ant-like. If you zoom in on its face, we see the typical spider jaws. You see the pulps. You see the spider anatomy. Oi. Ah, it's making a web, guys. It's hanging by a thread. My camera is not cooperating. I cannot get over the fact that this is a freaking spider. I just can't. That is so incredible. So amazing. Don't you love nature? Nature is so full of surprises and amazing things we haven't seen or discovered. This YouTube channel wants to document all of it. I'm trying my hardest. Dude, look at it. It's so, 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 so amazing. Wow. I'm speechless. In fact, when I saw it, I was like, huh? That's the biggest ant I've ever seen. It's a very, very fast and hard to film. Wow. So many insects, huh? Wow. Right guys, so in the forest they found an abandoned bird watching tower. I'm gonna climb it, see if the view is any nice. This is my stuff. Let's hope there's no snakes in it or anything. Oh, well, here's something interesting. 
Hello guys. So here in the corner, looks as if some bats are using it as a home. I'm surprised because they are quite exposed over here. Hello silly guys. Hope I didn't disturb you with my presence. They seem to be pretty relaxed. Wow, there's a big diversity of bats here, but you rarely see them this close. That's pretty cool, man. It's a bat tower. All right. These towers sometimes are used by wildlife, so we have to be careful. There can be snakes in it. Animals love to use places like this. Well, it goes higher. It's a bit overgrown with plants. Let's hope it doesn't collapse. No more bats. This is a bit scary. It's high. Okay. Well, we made it. Whew. Looks like the roof has collapsed. Whew. Oh God. Hello there. Wow, so the view over here is pretty amazing, all things considered. Have to make sure not to drop my camera, but now you can really see the surroundings well. So what's cool is 30 years ago all of this used to be pastures, it was completely deforested. But since, since about 30 years Regua has started reforesting the area. And all these planted trees here, this whole forest was reforested by humans manually. Tree by tree, it was planted by the owners of Regua. And here you can see the result of their effort, because here on the back, see these hills, these are still deforested, see? This is just ruined land, pastures. Here you see a little town. I think it could be the town of Guapiatsu, maybe. I don't know. It's hard to say from here. That's actually a wonderful view, isn't it? There's a very big iridescent blue-green butterfly here, down on the watchtower. This is a bit scary to film it like this because I'm hunched over on the edge. If I fall it's pretty much over, I die instantly. Let's not think about the intrusive thoughts. Pretty sure it's a species of Dinamine. Thankfully this camera has an amazing zoom. I'm zoomed in so much the quality may be a bit lower. Huh, can you see it? It's flying here. A lot of butterflies live in the canopy layer of the rainforest. But the high position of this place allows me to film some species that I otherwise never see on camera. Because they're flying too high above the trees. But now it's me that's above the trees, so now I, I can film the butterflies. It's pretty cool. Butterfly is special. I'm going down for a few floors because I really want to film it. Of course, when I'm here the butterfly has disappeared. Oh, that's disappointing.
Treetops are full of life. Here is a mysterious arboreal roach species. It's very high in the treetops. This seems to be another Dinamina, but this time it is the female. I think it could be the Dinamina postverta female. Very interesting. This plant seems to be secreting sugar. Beetles, ants and butterflies are gathering to drink from it. Or maybe there's aphids on it. Guys. Standing here allowed me to film some butterflies I've never seen before in Brazil. That just goes to show how powerful the canopy is. Already saw some unusual stuff, but I'm concerned it's getting dark. The sun is going down. I don't want to be in the darkness in the forest, so I'm going to finish the trail and go back. It was nice though. Uh-oh, I hear a storm coming. I think it's time to go back to my house thanks for watching this show i really appreciate it i always do my best on these videos tower starting to get dark so we're gonna go back i don't want to get caught in the dark that would be scary here we can see a pretty enormous spider eating something hard to show you how big the spider is. I don't want to put my hand too close. Let's put my hand behind it, maybe. Oh, this guy see it. It's big, isn't it? Whoo, very large spider. Big orange belly. I don't think I've seen this species before. Now, if you ask me, this is a big and scary looking spider. Look at that. Okay. Hopefully it's doing a good job eating the nasty stinging horse flies and stuff. Spiders look scary but they're beneficial. Today I've seen actually some really cool spiders. One, let's poke it a little bit just for the show. Hello. Boop. Boop. Ooh, showing more of yourself, huh? Wow, it's a beautiful spider though. Oh. So what species is it? It seems to be an Eriophora spider. Maybe Eriophora fuliginea. Spiders in the tropics can look very intimidating. And some species can even be dangerous. Still, there is no reason to be afraid. If you use common sense and don't actively try to hurt them, most spiders will completely avoid conflict with you. Even the dangerous ones. In this case, 
I think while this spider can have a painful bite, I suspect it's otherwise wow. harmless. I don't plan to mess with it, however, so just enjoy the great close-ups. Look at that, though. That's absolutely amazing, isn't it? Wow. I think I have to hurry up, guys. Well, that's all beautiful fun and games, but uh, the thunderstorm is terrifying me. So, uh, we're gonna leave the spider behind and start making progress. I'm gonna hurry back and not stop for animals. The thunderstorm here can get really bad in the forest. I have to go back or I will be in trouble. Going fast now. I'm not scared of snakes or spiders, but I am scared of the thunderstorms. Ooh, they've been really heavy. It would be really bad to be here in the forest. Also, it will get really dark and cloudy, so I will be caught here at night if I don't hurry up. Yeah, I don't want to be puma lunch tonight, cougar lunch. We're gonna go back to Regua to my research house. Hope you're enjoying the show. A oh. little bit of a reminder, my YouTube channel is completely demonetized by YouTube. When I upload a video, I essentially make my videos for free. YouTube refuses to tell me why they demonetized my channel. They randomly sent me an email one day saying that my content is not fit for monetization. So if you like the show and if you like what you're seeing, if you think, wow, this gives me some value, this is entertaining, it's educational, I love this, consider tipping or donating to my channel. Of course, whoop, my camera got caught in a vine. Tips and donations are not mandatory, and anybody watching my channel is very much appreciated. I understand some people are not willing or able to afford it, that's fine. But donations and crowdfunding is what keeps my channel alive. It gives me the budget to travel. I would love to visit other countries like Costa Rica, Australia, Australia. How about making videos in the rainforest in India? Papua New Guinea. Imagine the giant bird wing butterflies that I could film for you, the Ornithopteras. Oh, there are so many but butterflies in the world. How about the Amazon rainforest? I've never been in the Amazon rainforest. This is the Atlantic rainforest, it's different. Oh, so many butterflies I have to film. And all the budget for my show comes from donations. So consider checking out my Patreon or other means available in the description, guys. Thanks for watching, I really love and appreciate all of you. Ooh, it's tough. starting to rain. Thankfully I'm close to the end. Alright ladies and gentlemen, there's some rain. But it doesn't look like extreme storm yet, thankfully. Look at the beautiful view. God, I love nature. Please guys, if you ever want to go on a holiday and see insects, come to Regua. We take tourists, we take volunteers. That's right. Some people come here and they volunteer and we accept them. You could literally come here and volunteer for us and see all this wildlife too, just like I do. I'm not special. I'm just one of the visitors here. And you can visit us too. That's the message of the day. Goodbye everyone. This is the end of the video. I'm close to my house now. I'm gonna go inside, take a shower and have dinner. Now don't forget to keep following me guys, because every few weeks I have a totally new video for you. You don't want to miss the insect next time, bye! I was gonna stop filming, but I saw a little extra bonus near my house. The males of a solitary bee species gathering under a leaf. It seems that the males of these type of bees roost together and aren't allowed inside of the burrows of the females. 
Not much is known about their behavior, however, much like most of the other insects in the rainforest. That's why I'm so obsessed with documenting everything. Most of these animals have rarely been filmed or photographed. What's that sound? If you like the show, consider donating. It helps me make more videos. I am demonetized and YouTube does not pay me anything. There's a predator memo fan class.